I'm, I'm with uh, Chris McKee, who's the Director of Public Relations and Industry Compliance for WatchGuard. And he's here to talk about uh, UTM and how it's evolved to XTM. So, so Chris, can, can you first of all tell our, our uh, viewers what UTM and XTM are, and then uh, uh, talk about XTM as a, as a protection for their environment? Sure, certainly. Well, um, UTM really is, is the, the evolution of, of the original firewall. So WatchGuard in 96 was one of their first firewall pioneers. Uh, it was in the early 2000s that the UTM became developed, which stands for Unified Threat Management. Uh, basically, the original definition was firewall plus IPS, IDS, and gateway antivirus. That really set the core frame of what a UTM appliance could be. Um, and over the years, we've added additional technologies, web filtering, uh, or other networking features like SSL VPN to, to give the box even greater functionality. Today, we're at a crossroads where uh, the, the, the original definition of UTM may be limiting in some respects. And now we're looking at extensible threat management. And we look at that for a variety of reasons. One being, threats are becoming more dynamic. They're, they're certainly more pervasive and in some respects becoming more stealthy. Um, so we're, WatchGuard is designing these appliances to address those different types of threats. Um, so we're adding additional features. And when, that's why we call it extensible, is, is the ability to add on to the existing platform. So our appliances now have greater threat management capabilities. In addition to that, we're looking to add on greater networking capabilities, so things such as clustering, high availability, uh, active-active failover, as well as then greater management capabilities. Uh, again, things like multi-box management, role-based access control. These are the things that go far beyond, and that's why we look at extensible as adding onto these boxes and being the next generation of, of UTM. So when you say um, um, role-based management, are, mm -hmm. are you saying, uh, okay, this group of people can access this website, but this, this group of people can't? So for example, security professionals can go to certain sites which have security-based tools, but you certainly wouldn't want users or people within your organization accessing them. Right. Is that, is that what we're talking about? In it's pretty close. It's that and more. So it, it certainly is a role-based control in allowing certain groups or segments of your organization, again, like you're saying, to have, let's say, minimal access to certain areas. But it's also from an administrative standpoint to give, uh, let's say, administrators or the C, it really goes from the CSO on down to say, I want to have super user privileges to my firewalls or these unified threat appliances. And for maybe people down in the branch offices, I want them to just have reporting capabilities so they can see where their employees are going right during the day. They can see what threats are potentially hitting their network. But I don't maybe want to give them access or control to the devices themselves. This gives a, a greater sense of uh, management control over multiple boxes as well as by, by having this fine granular uh, capability, it also limits risks of mistakes, right? There, there's, there's the human element of threat management where people make mistakes in configuration or like you're saying, allowing people to go to sites where really they shouldn't be. What about clustering and, and did you say active, active failover? Yes. Why would I want to cluster my file? Ah, that's a great question. And, and the reason why is it sets up from the past, one of the, the Inhibitors to UTM adoption uh, has mainly been because as you turn on more and more features and functionality, the performance of the box tends to slow down. Today, again, that's something we're at a crossroads of XTM, we have uh, more and more powerful processors. The hardware designs are significantly greater in terms of throughput. Well, when you add two together and you have active-active WAN failover capabilities or load balancing, it, what it allows now is you to turn on more and more security features, more management features, more networking features, and yet still maintain line speed through your network so you don't run into those latency issues or any sort of throughput issues that you may have seen in the past. So, so in other words, if I've got, is it two boxes or do I still have the one box? I, I suppose clustering. Well, clustering, have clustering have you at least two have boxes. two, right. Um, you know, my listeners and, and viewers will just say that's just an excuse for you to sell us more boxes. Well, the, being security yeah. professionals, we're the most security, uh, sorry, most skeptical uh, right. people in the industry. Absolutely. Um, and, and it's funny you say that because in reality, the, the reason why people buy UTM in the first place is to consolidate multiple boxes, right? Why buy a firewall and then a separate IDS, IPS box, a spam box, you know, antivirus, gateway antivirus. Um, the list goes on and on, and what UTM is allows you to consolidate multiple boxes so where I may require five boxes 
now one can do that same function, that's five fewer to buy, five fewer to service, five fewer to manage. Now if you want to have that high availability, if you're a large scale enterprise, you're a data center, you want to have that, that throughput always there, now you're only buying two boxes instead of 10, right? So you still have a huge economy uh, of scale savings. Right. Um, XTM, in terms of extensible, can, can corporations actually extend the functionality themselves or is it only a, a watch guard? Uh, extensibility, you, you, I, I'm, I'm presuming you, that, or assuming rather, that the way you extend the functionality is a BIOS upgrade or, or so on. Certainly. Well, the, the software is the foundation to it, mm -hmm. and with it, uh, the extensible aspects come with software upgrades. So once you buy the hardware, in essence, you're, you're guaranteed a greater total cost of ownership and investment protection because now you're just getting free upgrades on the software. So in essence, the, the enterprise gets that. Um, but the other aspect of extensibility comes into the management side of it as well. So again, enterprises can pick and choose. Uh, a good example would be how we set up our management interface. For example, we now have CLI, which is command line interface, a web-based interface, and then our WatchGuard system manager, which is its own proprietary uh, management software. But depending on how you like to operate, suppose you're, a, you're familiar with Cisco and you want to stay with your Cisco CLI, click, 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 and do your scripts with that, we now give you that option. So really we give you the management control to work the way you want to work. Um, is there any, anything else you'd like to uh, mention about uh, XTM? Well, I think the key points are it, XTM really is now the next generation of UTM. I don't see it as a new category because UTM is still basically integrated security appliances. We just say this is the next generation of what you get out of it, greater security, greater management capabilities, and greater networking functionality. Um, Chris, thank you very much for your time. Oh, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Ben Chai. I'm the editor for securityvibes.com. If you've enjoyed this video or have any other comments to make, please do fill in the comment boxes and let us know what you think. Thank you.